All right, so before I start with warrior kids and what this role is in the home of the family for these children, I want to explain why God wants us to have kids in the first place. <laughs> first, let me tell you guys why God doesn't want us to have kids. He doesn't want us to have kids to have lookalikes. And by looking around this room, thank God for that. You know, that, that reminds me, my father always told me, he said, Micah, he said, son, you, you have got to marry a good-looking woman because you're not very good-looking, and your kids, we need to make sure they come out halfway decent, right? So thank God for my wife, Amanda, on top of that. But listen, yeah, right? Amen. Again, guys, that's not why God invented children. He invented children for one reason, and that was so we would train them up, he could work through them, and build his kingdom. That's the whole reason we have kids today. It has nothing to do with you and your dreams and your aspirations. It's about what God has intended for these children, right? Amen. I want to go to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. If you got your Bible, get it out. Ephesians chapter 6, 1 through 3. I'm going to be reading from the Living Bible today. My mentor and elder, Don Spadafora, will like that. Somebody say amen when you get there. All right, kids, listen up. Children, obey your parents. This is the right thing to, be, this is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. Honor your father and mother. This is the first of God's Ten Commandments that ends with a promise. And this is the promise, that if you honor your father and mother... Yours will be a long life full of blessings. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I praise you. I love you. I thank you so much for the safety of this congregation this past week. I thank you for the families that are involved. I thank you for the people that serve in this church. God, thank you for each and every person that you've put around us, not only in, in leadership, but God, again, just in those serving opportunities, because God, I have no doubt that without them, this is not possible. You've shown me that. You humble me each and every day. You put somebody on my heart each and every day that serves at this church. God, I just ask that you continue to bless those people, bless those families. God, bless this congregation. God, I ask that any damage that was done this week to anyone's homes, vehicles, whatever it may be, God, I just claim victory over those situations. I claim that you show up and you show out and you help out. And God, I just want to pray over these children today. God, I just ask that you clear their minds, you clear their hearts, you open their eyes to what it is that you've given me to give them today, God, because this has nothing to do with me. I did not come up with this sermon, God. You are the one that gave me these words to give to these children. God, I need them to see that. I need them to, for 30 minutes, God, for 30 minutes, I need them to listen. I need them to pay attention to you, God. Again, this is not me. This is you. God, in this moment, I ask that you anoint me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. That you take all my pride, selfishness, anger, anxiety, pain. God, you take it away. You throw it to the sea and you replace it with nothing but you. Nothing but your breath, your peace, your joy. And God, your boldness today to give your word. God, I love you and I praise you. Help us to love, help us to laugh, help us to forgive. Amen. All right. If you remember from the first sermon of this series, from the very beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, we were made in his image, right? Man was made in his image. Then woman came, also made in his image. And also in Genesis chapter 1, it tells us as parents to be fruitful and to multiply. So God's number one goal for us, having kids, again, is to reproduce himself through us to grow his kingdom here on earth. I have to repeat that. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. I'm going to pull it up. This is the whole thing that I just read. And I want to read it again. And here's what we're going to do, kids. Draw my dang pen, didn't I? All right, all of y'all sitting up here, I need y'all to pay attention. There's two words today, 
Every time I say this word, how many of y'all know how to do the floss? Any of y'all know how to do the floss? That's the floss right there. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, sweet. All right, sit down. All right, so here's the deal. Every time y'all hear, there's two words that if y'all hear it today, every time you hear it, you are to get up out of your seats and do the floss. If you do that, I haven't said the words yet. If you do that, there's an opportunity. Where's Ashley at? Miss Ashley right here has got some candy she's going to pass out to you guys. And this ain't no, this ain't no cheap candy, okay? I know y'all are like, this is, you know, my, the pastor, he got some cheap stuff, like some nasty stuff. This is some good stuff, right? Like if y'all don't do it, I'm cool because I get to take it home and I'm going to eat it, okay? So this is good stuff. All right, so here's the thing. It's the first one that gets up, by the way. Unless we get down to like we got a lot left and we'll figure something out. But let's read this again, kids. I need y'all to read this. Can y'all see this over here if you can't see this? Okay. You can't see this? Well, then you just pay attention and I'll tell you the words. Okay. Children, obey your parents. This is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. Honor your father and mother. This is the first of God's Ten Commandments that ends with a promise. And this is the promise that if you honor your father and mother, yours will be a long life full of blessings. Okay, for those of y'all kiddos that can see up here, there's two words that are all in bold. Obey and honor. That's your two words. Anytime you hear one of those two words today, you jump up, you do the floss, you might win something. Y'all understand? Y'all see where I'm going? Okay, cool. And if you do the floss, then it's terrible. I'm not giving you any candy, okay? You gotta, you gotta be able to dance a little bit. All right, the husband's command, if y'all remember a few weeks back, we talked about the husband's command, which was love your wife like Christ loves the church, correct? We remember that. The wife's command is to respect the husband. We remember that. Now, the command to the children is to obey and honor. <laughs> to obey and honor your parents. Yeah, you can give a few of them away if we need to. That's fine. Like, if you don't remember, like, if it's a tie, like, I'm cool with that. Like, that's fine. If we run out of candy, it's your fault. I want to go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. We're just going to look, or excuse me, chapter 6, verse 1. We're just going to look at this one verse first, kiddos. Again, children, obey your parents. This is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. Obey is to comply with the commands, orders, or... Y'all sit down and listen. Sit down. Okay. Obey. Obey is to comply with the commands... I didn't even mean to do that. All right, let me start over. This word right here means to comply with the commands, orders, or instructions of a superior, which is your parents. Agreed? Agreed? I can't hear you. Agreed? Thank you. Okay. This word in Hebrew is the verb meaning to hear. But it means much more than just hearing or listening. It means to hear and respond appropriately. Okay? You can hear a lot of things. You can respond a lot of ways. But when you actually obey... You need to respond appropriately. Understood? Now, do y'all know what that means when I say respond appropriately? That doesn't mean act like this goober that was just on the screen, okay? That means to actually do what you're told. For instance, do y'all remember the part where he was taking the trash down? Okay, yeah, don't, don't throw the trash, okay? Now go put it in the right place, okay? You see what I'm saying? That's responding appropriately. The way this goober did it is not appropriately, okay? <laughs> Teenagers, this is also so important to do this now. Okay, I'm talking to teenagers. I'm not talking to you young kids right now. I'm talking to our youth. The reason why that is, is it's so important that you respond to your parents this way now because at some point in your life, you're going to have what we call a J-O-B. And do you know what comes with a J-O-B? A B-O-S-S. -S. They're not much fun. So all this grace and mercy that you're receiving from your parents right now, don't expect that from your boss. It's important that you soak this grace and mercy in right now and learn from it because I'm telling you, when you go apply for that job and you get that job and you show up late, yeah, that's not going to work. 
I assure you of that, especially if you work for me. It's not going to work, period. Our parents are trying to instill in you teenagers, you youth, that this is how you're supposed to live life. Understand that they're not being hard on you just to be hard on you. They're being hard on you because they expect great things from you. Understood? He gets it. One of the biggest issues I see today is non-obedient children. Truth be told, many times this is the problem is that they're following the example of the parents. If you, are, if you as parents are not obeying the rules, why would you think your children would be obedient? Why do you think they would obey? Why do you think they would obey? They're not paying attention. I mean, honestly, parents, if you think about this, if you run a red light, if you're speeding, if you park in a handicapped spot, if you try to cheat the government on your taxes and your children see this, do you not think they're going to think that's okay? Well, my daddy did it. Well, my mama did it. We as parents have to lead by example in every stretch of the way and I know my children are looking at me crazy right now because I sped on the way here this morning <laughs> that whole saying you know do as I say not as I do that doesn't work I'll just be honest with you it doesn't work don't rely on that as parents some of y'all I know here are not parents right now some of you are in between that age of teenager and you know adulthood I hate to call it that. That's the truth of it, adulthood. Please listen today. I hope that y'all are gathering something from this that will help you once you do have children. This brings me to another point. Uh, what is sad today is we're living in a time where in some homes parents are having a hard enough time getting their own life right and not getting their children in check. They're not spending the necessary time to get their own life corrected, and it's causing problems with their children in the real world. <laughs> this reminds me of a story at a grocery store, okay? There's this, there's this manager at the grocery store. He's stocking shelves, and the shelf over, he hears somebody hollering, you know, parents are getting up. He, he figures it's probably just a parent getting upset, but all of a sudden he hears, Susie, don't do that. He continues to stock shelves. A little bit later, Susie, I told you once, you better quit. A little bit later, Susie, it's the last time I'm going to warn you. So this guy's stocking shelves. He's like, man, i got to go to the next aisle. This is going to be awkward. So he goes around the corner, and there's a lady and her daughter. And he walks up to the young girl, and he says, Susie, I think you better act right. Your mom's not real happy. And the older lady who was talking looked at him and said, huh, she's not Susie. I'm Susie. That's Betty. She's trying to fix her own problems, guys. Unfortunately, in a lot of households, it's sad. There's a lot of kids that are actually helping raise the parents. That's a big problem. It's a big problem when you see that a parent getting home late at night who's been where they don't need to be and you've got a 12 or 13 year old kid that's sitting there watching the other two kids. That's a big problem, parents. And it's happening, I assure you. The church has a huge role in fixing that problem. I want you to look at the second part of verse 1. This is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. Kids, who is in authority over you? Your parents, right? Do you all know how important that an authoritative figure is in the Bible? Let's go to Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Everyone must submit to the governing authorities, for all authority comes from God. And those in that position of authority have been placed there by God. Kids, your mothers and your fathers 
That is an anointed position of authority by God. If you're not following your parents' direction, listen to this. If you're not following your parents' direction, you're dishonoring God. I didn't say anything. I did say honor. (laughs) Guys, this is important. That authoritative figure in your life, those two parents, again, they're not doing this just to beat you up. They're doing this to teach you and guide you. And again, if you're not following that direction, then you're not following God's direction. Kids, I want you to keep in mind that even though a parent is an anointed position, it does come with boundaries, just like a husband has boundaries over the wife. Abuse is not tolerated. Now, when I say abuse, by the way, I'm not, okay. Because some of these parents are like, Micah, listen, I whipped my kid three times this morning. Okay. <laughs> There's a difference between abuse and, 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 and discipline. Okay. When your parents discipline you, again, they're trying to teach you. That is something that is within those boundaries of an anointed position of a parent. Parents, your job is to discipline, but not to beat your children. I know sometimes that's hard. I get it. Trust me. I get it. But your goal is to instill discipline in your children, but it's to... You want to break their will without breaking their spirit. You see, God made them the way they are. God instilled the spirit in them that they have. Sometimes that spirit is maybe a little honoring. Sometimes it's a little bold. You need to discipline that boldness, but don't break it from them. There's a reason why they have it there's a good chance they're going to be a strong leader one day. If you beat that out of your kids, you could be disrupting God's plan completely. Y'all follow me? Children, do not be a rebel to your parents. Don't be rebellious to their discipline. If it's being done biblically, That's the way that discipline needs to happen. In Proverbs chapter 13, it tells us not to spare the rod. Who in here knows what a rod is? Any of you kids know what a rod is? Okay, a rod is like a a fishing rod. (laughs) I've been whipped by one of those, yeah. Yeah. A rod is like what they call a a switch, okay? It's like 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 a limb from the tree, but it's not just a limb from the tree, okay? Most limbs around here in northeast Texas and southern Arkansas, they're going to break when you get whipped by them. These are a little bit more flexible and very stout. They hurt. They sting, okay? That's what we're talking about here. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to Proverbs 13, verse 24. This is for the kids and the parents. The battery already died. Battery's dead, Dustin. I bragged on you. I bragged on you. While we're doing that, I'm just going to say you kids need to think long and hard about obeying your parents. Good job. There you go. By the way, if you can't do the floss, just do any dance. I don't really care what it is. It doesn't really matter. That's pretty good. Proverbs 13, 24, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Okay, kids, listen up. If your parents are not disciplining you, the word says that they hate you. So if you're not getting disciplined at home, if you're not honoring that discipline the way that you're supposed to, I promise you, let me just, let me start over with this. There's not a group of parents in this room that doesn't love you guys. I know all your parents. Pretty much every one of your parents. They love you. So when they do come at you with a rod or a paddle or a 
belt or heck my mom whooped me with a rubber glove one time I mean it did, you know whatever it is whatever that rod may be understand guys they're disciplining you again because they love you this verse points that out the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them now this is very important this is for you parents that word careful it's what we were talking about earlier break the will not the spirit this is something that I struggle with when it comes to disciplining my children is I act a lot of times out of anger and impatientness, right? Is anybody else in this room that does that? Am I the only jerk in here? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, somebody, come on. There's more than that. Raise your hand. Yeah, I was about to say. I'm looking at, yeah, I'm looking at some of you like I know. What he means by careful to discipline them, you discipline them out of love. It's not out of anger. When you discipline your children out of anger, that's when that word beating your children can come into play. Make sure that it is out of love. Now, I'm not saying you can't be angry out of love. I've been angry out of love. But I've also calmed myself down before it was time to actually discipline. You know, one of the things that I love about my wife, she's amazing at this, is she takes care of the kids throughout the day. Y'all heard me talk about Amanda a thousand times, but... She'll let me know when I come home how things are. And that's a great team. Because when I come home, I haven't been with them all day. I haven't seen what caused the problem. So I'm not angry when I discipline them, right? She's angry. And that's why I should be the one that comes in and disciplines. That's a great team. It's the way it should work. Teenagers. A teenager is struggling between independence and, or excuse me, dependence and independence. They want to be free, but they can't afford to be free. I mean, they want freedom, but they have no money. They don't want to be told what to do either. Am I right, teenagers? You want to be free, you ain't got no money. You poor, you poor. You think you got money, you ain't got no money. Trust me, you get out in the real world, you ain't got, I thought I had money. I'll never forget, man, when I was 18, I'm like, I got this. I got this. And then, uh, mom, I mean, like, it was quick, okay? So, so understand, you ain't, you ain't got no money, okay? And then, y'all don't want to be told what to do. Like, it's frustrating. Like, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help my kids. But they don't like to be told what to do. I love to be told what to do. It makes my life so much. I don't have to make decisions. That's a good thing. Start accepting that, teenagers. But, you know, <laughs> teenagers think they know everything, and they want power and responsibility. Am I right? Isn't that what you hear? Like, I want some, I want some power. I want some power. I want some freedom. I want some freedom. Okay, well, with freedom comes responsibility. You know, giving power. Okay, last night, I got, I got another story. Last night, oh my gosh, we decided at my house, hang on, I got to get my, my act right to give you a story. Okay. <laughs> last night, all week during this blizzard that we've had in, in, in northeast Texas, we, we have been wanting to have the whole family sleep in the living room. The whole family. We got this huge blow-up mattress. We got two couches. So we, we stuck the blow-up mattress in between the two couches so we could all sleep in the living room with fireplace, all right? That's what we want to do, just as a family, right? So the whole week goes along, and like, we, we didn't do it, we didn't do it. Like, people were going to sleep different times and so forth, and I got sick one night, so I went to bed early. Amanda got sick, she went to bed early. So anyway, and it's not COVID, by the way, okay? That's not what we had. You don't want to know what we had. I'm not going to go into explanation, but it, it was bad. So, so last night, we decided we're going to sleep in the living room as a family. I got the fire going. And, and, and I'm laying down, and, and I done got up three or four times. I'm, I'm getting things done. Go get some water. I'm, I'm, I'm stirring the fire up and putting more logs on. And, and I finally lay down. And you know that point of where, like, all right, I'm almost asleep. Like, I'm almost there. But it's hot. Like, man, it's hot. Like, I'm sweating. And, and, and I'm finna get up, and I'm going to mess with the thermostat. But about that time, out of the corner of my eye, Annabelle's getting up. So I say, Annabelle, will you go and turn the thermostat down just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so, so in the middle of the night, I've reached this age where I have to get up in the middle of the night and, and I have to visit the restroom. 
I wasn't there like a year ago. It just now happened. Like, it just, this just happened. It, you men know what I'm talking about, too. So anyway, so I get up, and, and I'm going to go to the restroom. And, and I get up, and I put my feet down, and, and there's a rug there. And, and so I don't feel it yet. But, but I need you all to understand something. Our house is like 100 years old. And, and, and it's, 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 there, there's no, it's, it's made out of concrete. It's built out of concrete. So when it's cold outside, it's cold inside, okay? Like, it's cold. So, so I get up, and, and my feet go down on the carpet. It's not that cold, but, but then I step on hardwood floor. Okay, our whole house is hardwood floor and tile, okay? I step on that hardwood floor, and I'm like, mm, that's cold. But, but then I go to our half bath, and, and that's tile. And, and it felt like my feet were on fire, okay? Like, it felt like, you know, nails in your feet. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, it was cold, right? So, so I... I I took care of my business probably faster than I ever had in my life. And so I'm on my way back to the bed, and I'm passing the thermostat. And I'm like, surely, surely she turned it down just a little bit. Okay, I usually keep the thermostat this week because it's been, what, negative one outside. I've kept my thermostat on like 72. Okay, so keep in mind, when it's on 72 in our house, because it's made of concrete, and it's an old house, and it's hardwood floors, and it's tile, it's going to be like 65. Okay, y'all follow me here? Y'all following this, right? So, so I walk by the thermostat, and it's on like 63. <laughs> so it's like 55 in the house. You, you can't trust them with everything. <laughs> Annabelle, I love you, but don't touch that thermostat again. <laughs> they want you to trust them. They have to earn that trust. <laughs> and Annabelle, she slept like a log. Like, she loves the cold like that. And I do, too, but that, that was cold. I mean, that was really cold. But, you know, you kiddos, again, teenagers, you're trying to earn that respect. You're trying to earn responsibility. And we will give it to you when we trust you with it. Okay? Did my parents follow that at all? Did y'all get that? Cool. I'm trying to do my best to, like, talk to these teenagers. Teenagers, your parents raise you with boundaries. It's like a football field. you got to stay in bounds. The more that you do right, the more that we will expand those boundaries. The less that you do and you do wrong, those boundaries get tight. I would give you another football analogy of the red zone and all that kind of stuff, but y'all just look at me crazy. Some of you kiddos is what I know. But that's how you've got to look at it. The more that we can trust you with, the more responsibility that we'll give you, teenagers. That needs to be your thought process. I think every parent in here will agree with that. And parents, you need to understand, if they are honoring and obeying you, if they're honoring and obeying you, Really? <laughs> See, I thought if I gave them some words, they'd actually pay attention. I, I, I didn't get that right. But anyway, parents, if they're doing that, guys, you, you got to trust them. You got to give them a little bit more responsibility. It's give and take, right? You know, for example, I mean, you, you've got cell phone time. You've got curfews. Um, friends. Give them, a little, give them a little bit more freedom there. But the minute that they don't honor and obey you, you take it away from them. Squeeze in those boundaries. I think that's the best way to actually teach teenagers. That's just my thought process. I might be completely wrong. And if I am, I apologize because I don't have teenagers yet, but one. So it's worked with her so far. Parents, if your children honor and obey you, make sure, again, that you're giving them that freedom again that they, they have well-deserved. That's so important, guys. I need, I need the parents to take that today. I get a lot of parents that tell me, says, Mike, it doesn't matter what I do, I have a rebellious child. What I have found out by counseling people with rebellious children is they're only rebellious because the parents have allowed them to be rebellious. Disciplining your kids is not easy. But again, if you spare the rod, you hate your child. Now, that rod doesn't mean you go out and you get a switch and you beat them with it. But it does mean that you discipline the child. 
if you're not disciplining your kids, you're crippling them for life. For life. Because let me tell you, I promise you that the jail cell that's not too far from here, the majority of the people in there either were parentless or not disciplined. I promise you that I have stats to back it up. As us as parents, it's so important that we make sure that we're doing that, and again, that we're doing it properly out of love. I promise you that if you do it out of love and you do it the way that this book tells us to do it, your children are going to grow so much further on their walk than if you do it out of anger. Amen? You kids that are rebellious, I want to show you guys couple verses in the Bible. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18 through 19. Y'all listen to this. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father or mother, very good, and doesn't listen to them, even after they discipline him. I want to start that. If they don't listen to the parent, even after they've been disciplined, his father and mother must take hold of him and bring him to the elders of his city, to the gate of his hometown. Okay, now I didn't want to put this part in there because I didn't want to scare you kids, but in verses 20 through 21, it actually says what they do to him and they stone him. Okay, we weren't going to put that in here. Thank God that's old law and not new law, right? So, so but back in the old days, they'd, they'd stone you if you didn't act right. Uh, we look at that as abuse nowadays and thank God for Jesus Christ that he came and he's not going to allow us to do that anymore. We don't have to do that to you kids anymore. But what I need y'all to understand, this whole take them to the elders, back in biblical times, this right here was meant to be structure of a church. So when they say go to the elders, if y'all are not acting properly, if you're being rebellious to your parents, even after they've disciplined, and the church sees that, their next step is to bring you to the church and put you in a room with the elders. And I'm going to go one further than that. First of all, I'm going to tell you, the three elders we got, I don't, I'm don't. i scared to be in a room with those three guys, <laughs> to be honest with you. I, I get scared every time we have a meeting. That's why I asked somebody else to come with. I asked Bojo or Zaire, it scares me to death. But anyway, those three guys, I'm going to go one step closer, and I'm going to say that not only, parents, if y'all have a rebellious child, I'm being serious. Bring them to the elders, and I'm going to stick Bojo in there with them too. Bojo don't tolerate. The church is supposed to help you as parents. If you're struggling in that situation, we're here for you, and we'll do it the right way. I'm being serious. I don't know any other church that's ever taught that. I know this is Old Testament. I know we live by new law. But if you notice, because I know we live by new law, I didn't put the whole stone thing in here, right? But I do believe that in the Old Testament, they are teaching us a structure and a way to live our life and live the church. So I'm here to tell you right now, again, if your kid is being rebellious, if they're absolutely not listening to anything that you have to say, and we see that you're doing the best that you can, come talk to us. We'll get those kids right. I promise you. The church has to step up, and they have to help in those situations. I want to go to Ephesians chapter two, verse, uh, excuse me, chapter six, verse two. Honor your father and mother. They're getting better at this. They're getting really good. I want to stop there first. The word honor, very good, is to have high respect for someone. What is the difference between obedience and honor? Do, good job. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't even highlight those. The difference between those two, obedience is actually an action that reflects honor. Good job. Ashley, are you out of candy? Like, what are you doing over there? Are you out of candy? We're, we're, we're done. Oh, okay. 
Y'all don't have to dance anymore. Y'all can just sit down. Yeah, y'all just sit down and listen. I'm sorry I ran out of candy. That was a lot of candy. Did everybody get a piece of candy? Did somebody? You'll be all right. All right, so y'all don't have to get up and dance, but I want to go back to that part. Honor is to have respect for someone. What is the difference between obedience and honor? Kids, what is the difference between obedience and honor? Did y'all hear what I said? Didn't pay any attention, did you? What I say? <laughs> At least they're getting that out of it today. Like, if they get two words out of this whole thing, we have done great. Yes, that's a success. I feel you. Obedience is actually an action that reflects honor. Obedience, reflection of honor. So to honor your parents is to be obedient to your parents. No, you're good. You're good. Honor is an internal attitude of respect. Again, keep in mind, kids, a mother and a father are in an appointed position by God. So if you are not honoring your parents, you're dishonoring God himself. Honor your father and mother. This is the first of God's Ten Commandments that comes with a promise. Do you all remember what that promise was at the very beginning when I read all this? Let's go to verse 3. This is the promise. That if you honor your father and mother, yours will be a long life full of blessings. Which of you kids want to live a long life? I mean, who wants to play Fortnite for the rest of their life? Yeah, there you go. Who wants to have blessings over them? In other words, like you get like a hundred inch big screen TV that you play Fortnite on, right? By the way, who in here, y'all even know what Fortnite, like, how's that work? Like, that's the weirdest thing. All right, sit down and hush. Hush. Y'all sit down. Sit down. Okay, so if you want to live that long life, kiddos, it's so important that you do honor, honor and obey your parents. I mean, that's just, that's the whole thing. You'll grow stronger not only as a person, but you'll grow stronger as a Christian in your walk to where you can lead and guide. And here's the thing. Y'all will get to be an example to other kids that you go to school with, that you have Sunday school with, that you have church with. But on top of that, one day you're going to have children. And you can tell them, you know what? I learned this lesson when I was a child. Teach this to your kids at a young age, to honor and obey those parents. And listen, don't do it just to have Fortnite and to watch it on a big screen TV, okay? That's not why you do it, but you do it because you want to live a long life. And here's why you want to live a long life. You want to live a long life so you can build the kingdom of God as long as possible. And in that process, he'll give you blessings along the way. Y'all get that? Good. You kids lack in four areas. There's four areas that you absolutely lack in. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm going to prove to you that you lack in these four areas. You lack in wisdom, stature, social maturity, and spiritual maturity. Now, you can look at me all day long, and you can tell me, and teenagers, this is y'all too, y'all can look at me all day long and tell me, say, no, I have all the wisdom. I have all, I'm good, Micah. I have stature. I have all those things. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and man. So what you're telling me is, is that you were better than Jesus. If you're telling me you've got all this, you're telling me you were better than Jesus before Jesus became an adult. This is proof that the most perfect man to walk the earth had to increase in wisdom, stature, favor with God and with man. I want to explain something to you guys. Y'all think y'all have a lot of knowledge, especially you teenagers. Y'all think you have a lot of knowledge. You probably do. You probably do. You probably got a lot of knowledge, especially in this tech world that we live in today. But here's the thing. Knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do with the knowledge. Y'all have no clue. I'll just be honest with you. You have no idea. You think you do. I thought I did. Listen, I was on my own at 18. And I thought I knew everything. I thought I had this world accomplished. Man, was I woken up. 
And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty tough. I'm a fairly smart guy. I say to myself every day, I say, self, you're pretty smart. <laughs> I say, self, you know, you, you've worked hard. And to this day, to this day, your pastor, who's 37 years old, I promise you still lacks a lot of wisdom. Why do you think I have three elders surrounding me and mentors that guide me through my life? Because I lack in those areas. I got a lot of knowledge, but I lack in some wisdom. Your parents are your elders. That's your mentors. Listen to them. They're trying to teach you guys. Teenagers, I hope you heard that. Trust me, I understand. I thought I knew it all. But I don't want to see you teenagers go through the same crud that I went through in the first few years of my adulthood. To be honest with you, all the way up to 30. I made a lot of mistakes. God placed good people around me, my parents included, that never gave up on me and led me in the right direction. Teenagers, don't think you know it all. Don't make that same mistake that I did. I want to show you this list of four kinds, the four ways that you guys are struggling, again, because Jesus did the same thing. Wisdom, which is the mental capacity, obviously. Stature, which is your physical capacity. Obviously, you've got a growing stature. Favor with men, that is your social capacity. In other words, knowing how to react in a social environment. Shaking hands, looking people in the eye, opening the doors for women. This is so important. I know I talk about social a lot, but guys, how many times can you watch somebody and the way they act socially and you know good and well they've been brought up the right way and they've been brought up in a Christian home? That shows the example that the parents are showing, right? And then favor with God. That's your spiritual capacity. These are things that your parents are trying to teach you. These are things that you learn at the church. If you listen to anything today, you were able to increase that spiritual capacity a little bit. And the more you increase it, the more you're ready for parenthood and life in this world and everything else that comes bombarding down with it. Because trust me, you're going to need that spiritual capacity to be above and beyond if you're going to make it in the world we live in today. Grab a pen and paper. We're going to write this down. Somebody say amen if they got their pen and paper. I was about to say, man, they're in the aisles. Like, you should have that. Go ahead, Nick. A child's actions are not just a reflection of their parents. It is also a reflection of their church. Kids, kids, I need y'all to listen. Matter of fact, I'm going to come over here. Y'all listen to me. If you're not obeying and honoring your parents... It doesn't just look bad on your parents. It looks bad on your pastor. It looks bad on everybody that's sitting behind you right now. It looks bad on your church. So the next time you get in a situation where you've got to figure out, am I going to obey my parents? Am I going to honor my parents? If it takes it to you to go to a whole other level and think of not only them but your church, your pastor, and God himself, do it. Honor and obey your parents. Amen? Amen. That's what I like to hear. Okay.